Joining us live by Skype is Shegun Awosanya, founder, president, CF, Social Intervention Advocacy Foundation. Thank you, Awosanya, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me on your program. All right. Now, the message by the Inspector General of Police that therefore all police officers deployed for the enforcement of these restrictions orders must be professional, humane, and tactful and must show utmost respect to the citizenry would seem to be mere formality, but we know that the danger of abuse is real and is a real one. What is your reaction to this, please? Well, I believe we have a lot of work to do and we cannot leave it to the authorities alone. Like I always say that people do what you inspect and not what you expect. The society themselves must police the police at this point. Because we've heard a lot of orders given by the IG and then we've seen what plays out eventually. That in the end, we don't have the commander's intent um, being executed on ground. As you can see that sometimes when an order is given like this, especially if there's a lockdown and the police are put on the road, they often misinterpret this to mean that they now have the power to control, to oppress, to violate the rights of uh, the people and exhibit their culture of impunity, lack of transparency, transparency uh, accountability, professionalism, and also property. So based on this, we must do what we have been doing for years now, which is to ensure that we um, uh, ensure that we monitor their activities and ensure that people have a place where they can report if their rights are violated. Now, Mr. Becker, how would you want to react to this also? I, mean, I, I, I think Mr. Wasson is, is, is right. I mean, he's done a fantastic job um, over the years in terms of his interventions in dealing with, uh, with, with the police, yes. uh, police uh, abuse. Um, so this is really, it's a granular thing. I mean, so you have a distance where the police see themselves as some kind of authority that um, is oppressive, or, you know, um, and they're not part of the community. Yes. And I think that it's, it's a whole mentality that we need to engage and probably change, in, you know, with the with police reforms and going on and so forth. But I think on this particular one, even the police, I mean, if you look at what's happening in the, in, in the U.S., for example, in New York, you have a high percentage of police officers who are now infected because yeah. they, are, they are really the front-line people. They're exposed, yeah. They're exposed as well. So they need to understand that this is a disease that has no boundaries and can affect them. And there should be some humanity in terms of how they, they engage the public and how they enforce the laws. Right. The laws are meant for the benefit of all of us, including them themselves. Right. So they should take care in terms of how they do their job. Now, Shagun, why, why would those deploy, deploy to protect lives? Like we always see at the end of the day, um, when it, the times are pretty much uncertain, you know, we live in a very fragile time. Why should those who are men of policing lives now be policed themselves? And this has always been our case. How do we begin to correct these ills from our police men, our police force? Everybody must realize that this uh, national security is everybody's business. And when we have authority figures or police officers who are the closest authority to us enforce laws, we must always not see it as their responsibility alone. We must be able to watch how they do these things and remind them themselves that they live in a society. Now, this is one of the reasons why we've been preaching and we've been trying as much as possible to let people understand the essence of community policing. Community policing is a concept through which police don't engage the people only when they are enforcing the law. You have a relationship with the people, you live with the people, you are part of the people. The police is the community, is the is a, is a public, and the public is the police. Or, as, 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 right, as rightly put, in, in other words, at times like this, when there is a lockdown, police officers who are put in society to operate will find it easier to relate with the people to know those who are sick, to know how to properly engage without necessarily having to use force. But the way it is now, there's a huge gap between the, pol between the police and the people. Trust has been waned. You know, they, they, there's a lot of gaps between the people and the, and, the, and, the, and the police and the public. And based on that, they have to force their way into the people's lives in order to correct one thing or the other. So the moment they find people doing something probably along the borderline of breaking a rule or so, they see it as a criminal offense and they start using unnecessary force that will eventually lead to the loss of lives. What, what would you say, what would you say is, a, is a huge factor to this? Hello? What would you say has contributed to this? You said what? What would you say is a, is a huge factor to this? 
Well, we, we like I said, we cannot continue to run after each police officers or police of officer who have not been probably trained and cannot probably be blamed for the way they are responding. One of the huge factors to all this is the enabling law that mirrors society the way it is in the here and the now. We still have a police act that mirrors our society in the 1943s. So we, we, we need to uh, this facilitate the police reform bill that we've been talking about. We need to finish these things and then begin to ensure that, that our police structure itself and generally security structure itself mirrors our society in the here and the now. And then it begins to reflect on their understanding of human rights. Because without this, we cannot move forward. Without this, we cannot compete. Without this, we can't have, uh, 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 we can align ourselves with global best practices. Now, Mr. Mecca, what, what, would, what would you say, to, in your opinion, um, could have contributed to this, to this disparity between the people and the police? I, 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 I think, I think he, Mr. Watson talked, touched on this largely yes. uh, in what he said. You have a police act that's largely born from, is a colonial relic. Okay. You know, go all the way back to 1940-something, even before then. And so there's, and, and the way the police was set up, it wasn't set up for us as citizens. It was set up by the colonial government to, to provide security for them, to enforce their certain level of security, to put the people, to make the people compliant for their own benefit. Yes. And so when we change over in 1960, we sort of just adopted the same mindset. And I think that has to change, where the police... Uh, we talked about community police, policing for a lot for a long time, but I think largely the, the, there has to be some level of reform that has to go on within the police force, um, and that's very critical at this point. All right, Shego, quickly, what, what accounts of human rights abuses have we received so far? Are there any? Yes, there have been several across across Nigeria. Right, bring and, us up and, to speed, please. It is it yes. is shocking that um, uh, even doctors have been abused you know, from going about their own business. When you know they are working al along uh, uh, as an essential service in the society, especially now under the lockdown. And people who are going about their business trying as much as possible to use the little window that they have to get food stuff and the rest, you are attacking them, you are shooting live bullets at them. These are unarmed public. So these are issues that we are following up, or following up upon in order to make examples of these officers, to let them know that the people are not your enemy. You don't attack the people because of things that you don't even understand. You are enforcing the law. You are protecting these people from contracting diseases, uh, from, uh, the, the, from being a victim of the pandemic. And you cannot kill them just to ensure that they don't get killed by a pandemic. So, I don't understand how this works. All right. So is this any hope, Shagun? They hope to do this. Yeah. So is this any hope and encouragement, knowing that um, Ses Jet says it has successfully launched a situation room to monitor issues of human rights abuses by all security agencies participating in the lockdown? Yes, it's encouraging, and we, we've been um, imploring and encouraging civil society organizations to also come up and do something productive, do something, you know, contribute their own quota also, and collaborate with authorities to ensure that we do this. If we all do the things that we need to do as organizations, as, as individuals, things will work faster. So this way, we could, because we have, uh, set just have done their bit, and then, and then and CF, Social Intervention Advocacy Foundation, is doing its own bit as, as you know, a build-up on what we've been doing over the years with the military and also with the police. As you can see, that we have numbers out there for you to report police officers or secure, uh, military officers who are abusing the rights of the people. And at least with, with an example that we saw in Delta State and with uh, uh, soldiers threatening on, on, on camera, the people that they're going to rape them, they're going to do this and do that and all, despite the fact that even the state got it wrong from the beginning in order to monitor, who were there to fill in that gap and ensure that those people were arrested within 24 hours. And these are the kind of things that we want to happen. When people know that they are being watched, they will do the right thing. All right, Shagun, just before we let you go this morning, can you quickly bring us up to date on what long-term plans are being pursued to, to, to develop a more humane and sensitive response police unit? Well, I, I believe that um, uh, the reports uh, are out there on the things that we're doing with the uh, Pol Committee on Police Affairs at the House of Representatives. So we're about to uh, fix, finish that meeting. If not for the cor corona break, we'll have been able to come together to look at the police reform bill again and be able to uh, put, push, it, push it forward for the assent of, the, of Mr. President. And I'm sure that 
why we are doing remote meetings and the rest, this law will be in place. And the moment it's in place, we can begin to, you know, uh, overhaul the system, remove people who are not even, not even meant to be there in the first instance, and then at the end of the day, begin to align the police system towards a lawful and uh, a peaceful engagement of the people without human rights ab right abuses. I'm sure we're closer than we've ever been before, and I'm also certain that people who are monitoring the times can tell and testify that we're not where we used to be. All right, Shogun, well, sir, thank you for your time and for joining us, and do stay safe out there. All right, thank you very much for having me. All right, Mr. Mekka, just before I let you go this morning yeah. now, what, what would you advise citizens um, who have had this experience of essentially being harassed to do, given the times we're in right now? I think there's also, on the flip side, there's also this mentality that we've developed over the years, also dealing with police, where uh, people, you know, start from a point of aggression, mm -hmm. also towards the police. I think that, I think the number one thing is, is, is to have access to information, okay. uh, credible information about what's going on, about what your rights are, and knowing that you knowing the the playbook in terms of how to engage police and so a lot of the times um, i'm not i'm not you know trying to you know um, talk down on how the police have abused people in the past but i think we also need to understand as people work under incredibly difficult conditions and it's 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 not there's nothing with, will take away from smiling at them and saying, you know, Oga, look, we're all in this together. Yeah. You know, this is the situation. And, and I think we need to do that. But I think the most important thing is access to information and training of the policemen, policemen is really important at this point. All right. Thank you very much, Director Quest Tech Media Limited, Mr. Mekamba, for your time on News on the Hour. Thank you.